you very much for coming to the show. Uh, I started my tour in September. Before that, I did some previews up and down the UK. I did a preview in a place called Preston. Are we aware of Preston? Yeah. I parked my car. I don't know if this is a good indication of what people are like in Preston, but I parked my car outside of the venue. And as I walked into the venue, a man offered me anal sex. <laughs> So I was late. <laughs> I was going to say I'll tell you a bit about me, but I think I just have. <laughs> but I am quite practical, I'm quite logical. In some ways I've got quite a male brain, and then in other ways I'm quite girly and quite feminine, quite emotional. I think, to be honest, I think I'm a bit of a mishmash of the genders. Uh, I mean, like, in a personality way. I don't mean, like, I've got a bit of a novel I can't explain. <laughs> Does yours look like that? <laughs> My friend invited me around for tea. She said, come round to mine, I'm going to cook all your favourite food. I said, what a lovely thing to do for somebody. So, of course, I went. A couple of hours later, I was sitting on the sofa, putting the world to rights, and she blurted out, just out of nowhere, she blurted out, I don't think my lady parts look like other girls' lady parts. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? I realised the whole night had been a ploy. Favourite foods by us. Come and look at me, Fanny. <laughs> said, I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it. But if you draw it on a bit of paper, <laughs> I'll have a look at that. So she drew it on a bit of paper, and I drew mine as well, and we compared them. And they were very similar. So she was much happier. She said mine was tidier. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> but I know I definitely don't want to look at hers now that I know that it's messy. <laughs> But it could have been worse than drawing any bit of paper. I could have just put some paint on and done a potato print. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wouldn't even need the paint. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> but I, uh, I tried to start a new euphemism recently. I don't know if you've ever tried to start a new euphemism. It's quite tricky. This one's not going particularly well. I tell you anyway, um, the euphemism is this. I see there's some leftover pie in the fridge. <laughs> Which is a euphemism for cunnilingus. <laughs> there was a few people are explaining cunnilingus to each other. <laughs> I was trying to think of a mime that I could do, but the only one I could think of was this. Over pie in the fridge doesn't really work with my fella because he's generally a very hungry man. <laughs> as soon as he realises that there's no actual pie in the fridge, a light goes out in his eyes. <laughs> I did the show in, in Stockton and there was a lady at the front said, I use that euphemism and I thought, you bugger, it's spreading like wildfire. <laughs> she said she's put her own sort of spin on it. She says, I see there's some leftover corned beef pie in the fridge. <laughs> no, no, no. Going to refer to me nunny as a food stuff. It's not going to be corned beef. <laughs> Probably something like Arctic roll. <laughs> Call to the touch with a bit of old cake round. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite work it if I've turned you off Arctic roll or just my vagina. <laughs> to be here though it's a nice temperature in here isn't it we'll get warmer as we go on obviously the lights and whatnot I respond in quite a peculiar way to the heat I think uh, mostly sort of here <laughs> well as I aimed that just at you guys in the front there didn't I sorry about that hey upstairs can I have a go there you go <laughs> down there gets what I call claggy <laughs> anybody else got a good word for that anybody else Moist. Who said moist? <laughs> moist is a good word. <laughs> what was that one? Sticky. Sticky. <laughs> oh, there was a lady the other day who said, uh, what you've got there is LDF. I said, what does LDF stand for? She said, long day, Fanny. <laughs> when I said claggy and Preston, a man said, oh, no, we call that ready. I do when it gets moist and sticky, I just do a plie. <laughs> I'm not 
not a massive belly dancer, but if I was a belly dancer, I would clearly be a massive one. <laughs> I just do that. <laughs> you only get a couple of seconds relief because it mostly just slicks back together. <laughs> I did a show in Edinburgh and a lady at the back of the room shouted out, you need to use some talc. <laughs> and I thought, surely that just forms a paste. <laughs> but I, uh, I tend not to see my friends of an evening because I work most nights. So I see my friends, uh, we go out for lunch and I really like it. I like going out for lunch with my friends. Went out with one of my friends, she's lovely, which is a bit of a mourner. Went out for a perfectly nice meal. She complained about the food, so we had to send the food back. And I made some hilarious remark about how the chef's now going to go and wank in a soup. <laughs> she came out with the best answer ever. She just went, oh, good. I haven't had sex in ages. <laughs> I thought, surely she doesn't think that merely ingesting spunk <laughs> is the same as having actual sex. If only it was that straightforward, you know, when you can't really be bothered. Just bung it in a smoothie, I'll have it later <laughs> on. <laughs> Could be one of me five a day. <laughs> but something I probably should have pointed out before now that you might have noticed is that I really love swearing. Um, oh, you've noticed, that's good. Because <laughs> I can't swear when I'm on the radio or the telly, so I have to make up for it elsewhere, like on stage and sometimes in top shop. Well, I can't get a tit in any of the clothes. <laughs> I don't know what your local branch is like, but mine has a floor that's just accessories, as if they've gone, you're too fat for our clothes, have yourself a scarf. <laughs> but the last time I was in, uh, I was, this is the kind of jewellery that I like, sort of elastic plastic, kind of that sort of thing, quite cheap and cheerful. And I was trying something much, very similar to this one, and um, I couldn't get it past me knuckles. <laughs> And the friend that I was with, she went, oh my God, you're like an actual giant. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Do we like swearing? Does Chiffy like swearing? <laughs> Anybody who doesn't really like swearing? <laughs> ah, fuck off. No. <laughs> I particularly like the word cunt. Um, <laughs> oh, well, that separates the men from the boys, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I like swearing, but not that one. <laughs> No, it's fair enough. I've got a friend who doesn't like the word. She said, we don't use that word in our house. We don't like that word in our house. We call that, see you next Tuesday. Have you heard this, that people call it this? Which really pisses me off. Because technically that would be S-Y-N-T. So not only is she scared of swearing, she's also fucking illiterate. <laughs> but she said, how would you like that word just shouted at you? And I said, sort of depends what's happening at the time. <laughs> sometimes struggle with sleeping as well. Just occasionally I have the odd bout of insomnia and I thought maybe I'll buy a CD and get these CDs, can't you, that have got soothing sounds and music on. I thought maybe I'll get one of those that might help us drift off to sleep. I noticed Paul McKenna has got a CD out, hasn't he? I can make you sleep. He's a very confident man, Paul McKenna, isn't he? It's not, I'll give it a bash. <laughs> I can make you sleep. He's also got I can make you thin, which I had thought about getting because it sounded like a challenge uh, for him. I can make you thin. Can you, can you, Paul? <laughs> Bring it on, motherfucker. <laughs> but he's also got, I can make you rich, and I thought, I wonder if that's his happiness box set. Thin, rich, sleep, done. <laughs> when I first started going out with my boyfriend, I was living in a flat where the boiler was broken and it was freezing, and he sent me a text, and the text said, if I was there, I would make you warm, I would make you come, and I would make you breakfast. And I thought, now that's a fucking box set, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not suggesting that that should be Paul McKenna's next box set. <laughs> I can make you come. <laughs> can you, can you, Paul? <laughs> oh, okay, he just did. He's good, he's good. I thought I was giving up smoking. <laughs> 
got a friend who's a, a massive bumper car. It's amazing we get on. Our lifestyles are so totally, totally different. We were having a general chat about how you meet potential partners. And I said, because I like to get to know people a little bit first, I said, I don't think I've ever kissed a man about whom I didn't know his GCSE results. <laughs> You may mock, but it's a very good way of filtering out all of the over 40s with their fucking O levels. <laughs> <laughs> my friend said, Is that true? And I said, Yeah. And he said, Oh my God. He said, I've had sex with people I haven't even seen. <laughs> but my friend has what I think is a dangerous lifestyle. He thinks it's exciting, but I think it's dangerous. Uh, for me, exciting is when you start a new tea towel. <gasps> I love it. It's been in the cupboard. It's all clean. It's got no bean juice on it. Fucking love it. <laughs> but my friend's lifestyle is dangerous. He, um, he takes drugs on a regular basis. I drink three pints of shandy a year. I can't even drink properly, let alone take drugs. Gives a cheer if you've never taken drugs in your life. <laughs> There's loads of us. See, my friend was telling me about this proper night that he'd had. This proper, he was listing all of these drugs. And I didn't know anything about drugs, but I was pretending to, to look cool. <laughs> and as he was listing them, I was going, aha. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, that one's smashing. <laughs> the reason I don't know anything about drugs is because Zamo said, say no. <laughs> it's a very age-specific joke, that one. There's a lot of people under 30 going, who the fuck is Zamo? <laughs> Google him, you might learn something. <laughs> so my friend's story is getting increasingly more boastful and a horrible feeling that I was going to have to match it at the end with a similar story. And he ended his story by saying, oh my God, my friends were texting me the next day saying, you've got no idea what shit you got up to last night. It was brilliant. And then he went like this. <laughs> like it was my turn. <laughs> I was thinking, what on earth am I going to say? So I had to think and I went, sometimes, oh fuck. <laughs> sometimes I eat strepsils when I've run out of sweets. <laughs> I'm not proud. <laughs> but then my friend starts telling me about his sexual exploits and he said he'd had sex on a kitchen sink. He said, have you ever had sex on a kitchen sink? And I wanted to tell him that I thought it sounded incredibly unhygienic. <laughs> but I didn't, I just went, no. <laughs> and I got home and I thought, am I a prude? I don't think I am a prude, but maybe I am. So I said to my boyfriend, <laughs> would you like to have sex on a kitchen sink? I get the impression it's supposed to be a bit more in the moment, you know, rather than like when you've done those dishes, get your arse on there. <laughs> because we're very well matched, my boyfriend said. Why would I want to have sex on a kitchen sink? That'd be like eating your dinner out of a shoe. <laughs> then my friend said he'd had sex on a plane. He said, have you ever had sex on a plane? I said, I've not had sex on a sink and that's in me flat. What do you reckon? <laughs> And he said, I've had sex on a plane. He said, that's dangerous. That's exciting. I said, well, I suppose it is. But I think having a massive shit with a queue outside on a plane is more dangerous. <laughs> and I've definitely done that. <laughs> of the Pile High Club. Uh, I was going to start off with a bit of advice. I'm not really very good at giving out advice. I give an example of how. I was in a supermarket and I saw this young couple wandering round and the girl said to her boyfriend, have we got everything? And he said, I think so. And I looked in their basket and all they had was a bottle of rosé and a cucumber. <laughs> they've got everything else they need in for a salad. <laughs> and what I should have said is, lube, love. <laughs> That's what you need. Lube. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> She's got to learn the hard way. <laughs> I'll tell you a little thing and then you can all go home and take your bras off uh, and do your belts. I don't forget about the men. I'm going to tell you another one of my euphemisms, if that's all right. Um, Let's see if we can get this into common usage, if possible. Um, there's a specific scenario for this euphemism. You know when you really need a poo? <laughs> but for whatever reason, you can't go. It's the wrong time or the wrong place. You're going to have to hold it in maybe for five minutes, maybe for six hours, whatever. <laughs> then when you're ten minutes away from a place or a time when you can offload. <laughs> 
everybody knows, doesn't it? And it begins the countdown. <laughs> Which in my case is an almost constant stream of thoughts. <laughs> this is when you join the scene. I'd been on trains and in meetings all day. I burst through my front door, just wanted to go on my own toilet. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Boyfriend was in the living room. He came out in the hallway and he went, How's your day been, love? And I needed to very quickly tell him that we weren't going to be chatting straight away. <laughs> so I said... I'm sorry, love. I can't talk right now. The trailers have started. <laughs> It'll be lovely. Thank you very much for coming. Good night.